I, I knew from a very young age that I would be an entrepreneur. Like I didn't, I didn't maybe not have the term for that, but I knew that I would be running a business somehow. Uh, I had seen my parents struggle, uh, you know, there's just like lower middle class kind of uh, nine to five uh, kind of um, people. And there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I knew this is not where I wanted to be. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I remember a story kind of, I've never told that story to anybody, but I remember that uh, my father gave me, uh, managed one day to uh, find me a job at a factory and uh, working, you know, nine to five in, a, in the factory floor and stuff like that. And I said, I do not want to be here. And I was crying. <laughs> I was crying. I was so depressed. And uh, so I knew that it's just like, okay, this is, I'm not doing that. And uh, I have to figure something out. Welcome to the Wealth Through Real Estate Investing Podcast, your source for real world strategies focused on creating long term wealth, cash flow, and financial freedom through real estate. Through guidance, tips, and stories of highly successful real estate investors and thought leaders, we provide you the tools to succeed and to reach the lifestyle you always wanted. And now, your host, Dwayne Clark. Hello and welcome to the Wealth Through Real Estate Investing Show. This is your host, Dwayne Clark, and today we have Eric Martell. Eric is a real estate investor, an entrepreneur, as well as the founder of the turnkey rental company, Martell Turnkey. He is also the author of Stop Trading Your Time for Money. Eric, thank you so much for joining us on the show, and how are you doing, my friend? Very good. Thank you for having me, Dwayne. Absolutely. Yeah, I had uh, interviewed your son a couple months ago. It was a great interview. Uh, mm -hmm. very knowledgeable. Uh, we talk about like a, a whole bunch of different topics. Uh, one yep. thing that kind of stuck out to me from that interview was his entrepreneurial background. And he kept yeah. saying like his, his parents were just very, all the stuff you kind of put him through to, in order yeah. to get him to his success at that age. And, and I was his very first investor. Yeah, know. he did say that as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's interesting is like, um, I would love to hear your background story as an entrepreneur, how you got started, as well as kind of raising, you know, kids of entrepreneurs and, and, and what it takes to be one. Yeah, I, I knew from a very young age that I would be an entrepreneur. Like I didn't, I didn't maybe not have the term for that, but I knew that I would be running a business somehow. Uh, I had seen my parents struggle, uh, you know, there's just like lower middle class kind of uh, nine to five uh, kind of um, people. And there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I knew this is not where I wanted to be. And um um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember a story kind of, I've never told that story to anybody, but I remember that uh, my father gave me, uh, managed one day to uh, find me a job at a factory and uh, working, you know, nine to five in, a, in the factory floor and stuff like that. And I said, I do not want to be here. And I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying. I was so depressed. And uh, so I knew that's just like, okay, this is, I'm not doing that. And uh, I have to figure something out. And um, so I went to university eventually, and uh, I had met a real estate investor that, uh, and he was just a, a regular guy. He was a um, community college teacher. And, um, and he had managed to build like a, an apartment building, a 36 unit apartment building that was, you know, that positive cash flow, great investment. And he was planning to, to build like a shopping mall and all of that. So very driven individual, but also very regular, <laughs> very regular guy, like a community college teacher. But I knew that I had to, I had to do something and, and then see if he can teach me what he knew. And, um, yeah, so he spent some time. He, decided, he agreed to mentor me, and that's when I bought my first apartment building, a, a eight-unit apartment building. I was 18 years old, second uh, year in uh, first or second year in the university, and um, that was it. No money down, positive cash flow, and uh, you know it was a little bit rundown, but uh, that was my first uh, my first real estate investment. And um, I mean, my plan at that time was not, you know, it was not about achieving financial freedom or anything like that. I mean, I didn't, I, I just saw an opportunity to learn and uh, from somebody that was doing it, that was doing real estate investment. And um, so I just took advantage of that opportunity. 
and uh, also to prove to me that it was possible to make money without spending the nine to five without having a job and that was really that first kind of my first experience and it really changed uh, how I saw everything else that I was doing after that even when I was doing a full-time job my, that was that was not my, what, who I was like I was yeah I was doing a, that my side gig was my full-time job mm -hmm. <laughs> I was doing business I was running a business and yeah I, I was doing a full-time job on the side but uh, so that's kind of that was my mentality throughout my career and it showed <laughs> if you ask my my managers <laughs> they would yeah, probably agree with that that's that's awesome I, I, I really love that story because like I said it's because it's just really about the mindset that you can actually do yeah. it you know compare it to you had your first experience you know work and you said this is definitely not for me and you, yeah. you know, sought your mentor. It was kind of similar to my background where I had a mentor and I actually was kind of able to see and touch it and then kind of believe differently than, you know, what they, you know, they train you in, in college is to go get a job. And yeah. just that oh, one yeah. thing was able to kind of propel you into your career. Can you kind of yeah. talk about now I had um, I mentioned this before about your turnkey um, investment yeah. company. So that mm -hmm. involves is it uh, single family all done for you you yeah. as the passive investor um, buys, as own tenant, it, and then you yeah. just get cash flow. Uh, can you That's kind of right, talk yeah. about kind of the history of starting that company and then what's kind of like the main focus of it? Well, it took us a couple of years to really find kind of like our niche and all of that. And uh, I mean, we started with, uh, so my younger son actually, you know, came to me one day and he said, hey, I want to I do real estate investing. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. You have an interview, not Etienne, that's, that's Antoine's brother. And uh, he came to me and said, okay, I want to do that. And I said, okay, well, that's interesting. And then we started looking into that and, you know, and it kind of brought back memories of when I, you know, my first investment. And um, so I said, okay, let's, let's look into that and uh, see what we need to do and, you know, learn the learning curve and all of that. And we tried all kinds of different strategy. We lived in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time. Um, so pretty tough market, very competitive. Um, and so we, we tried to do, you know, flips, uh, find like distressed properties and stuff like that. And then we, we thought we would be able to figure, find some of these properties and then, uh, renovate them and flip them. And we tried to do wholesaling. We tried all kinds of different things and it really didn't, didn't work uh for us uh i know it worked for some other people but uh it really didn't work for us i mean so the last uh, the straw that broke the back was uh the camel's back was really that that house that was like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars on the market for a listed price and uh i put an offer for, it was the bones were good but it was completely there was a, a hole in the roof there was mold everywhere there was this, it was incredible it was a complete gut job and uh, and uh, I this list price seven forty five. I put an offer for one point two million, mm. and it sold for one point four million dollars. Wow! And it was like there was like fifty offers on the house. It was just insane. Then I then I I still went to the drawing board and said like, okay, what can, I'm missing something. Like, what can we do to to do this? And then, you know, oh yeah, we can bring a realtor on the team. We can bring uh, uh, better financing, somebody with, that has like a huge bank account and you know, um, instead of doing hard money lending and stuff like that. We need to kind of tweak it and see what we can do. But still, the return on the, the, the cash on cash return was still pretty low compared to what we could do in, in, other, in other types of investment. So we kind of... Uh, pivoted from that and then we say, well, let's, let's do kind of like more passive income. And, um, so we looked at different markets, what other people were doing in passive income. And, um, and then we really went and looked at, you know, what are the best market for, for that? And, uh, we looked at landlord friendly, we looked at, uh, landlord friendly states, uh, you know, all, we basically built our criteria and then we found like Memphis and then Cleveland. And then we also did like St. Louis and all of that. And um, so these are the markets that we focused on. And um, I mean, I was very lucky about that, uh, you know, I had my sons and then that uh, uh, Etienne at the time, my younger son was working as a broker, as, a, as an agent, real estate agent. But Antoine was 
kind of free and he said okay well I'll, I'll do the work and you know so he basically called all the real estate agent and you know hundreds of them <laughs> and then only that's okay only two of them replied so mm. and then um and then he you know he made the first contact for uh for that and then kind of like got got that going so we found one realtor in um in uh, memphis um uh, and he's basically he had the property management company in place and the contractor and all of that and that's that's where we started we bought our first house uh, uh, in memphis um, and you know coming from the bay area you buy the house and it's the, i think we paid like forty thousand dollars for the house and then we uh we put like twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars in renovation we refinanced it and uh it was positive cash flow it was great i mean you can't even get that um well not, these are not the prices anymore but in those days like four or five four years ago yeah that's what you could get and you can't even get a down that's not enough for a down payment on a house nowadays so mm -hmm. that's pretty incredible and that's bringing you cash back as opposed to owning a home here where you just keep dishing money out mm -hmm. so so that's what we did and then we uh we we also did cleveland so we had a couple of realtors there that were pretty solid we picked one of them because we knew that we wanted to build a very strong relationship with one kind of one group one team and then you know and then kind of go with that and that's and now we have like nine nine construction crews wow. uh in cleveland and um mm -hmm. yeah so that's it and now my son Etienne now just moved to uh, to Memphis um, a couple of months ago, and so now he's going to be heading the uh, heading the Me Memphis uh, market. Wow! So he's going to be on on field there. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that's very impressive. Uh, I'll get, I'm gonna get into a little bit your kind of your your business model in a second, but it's kind of like a, you seem like a very family orientated person, yeah. like that, and especially you learning early on from a mentor and. Kind of passing that knowledge of entrepreneurship over how has it been yeah. for you um as a father work with your son and and for the people who are listening who wants to kind of you know bring you know bring your family close together work with the siblings and, and family members in order mm -hmm. to kind of you know in order to create that generational wealth and also that to, to create that that knowledge that's going to be lasting lifetime yeah so i mean the, for me it's it's been it's a dream come true uh, you know i i always wanted to to be with my family and then work with my family and go on vacation with my family i don't know if my family agrees with me i don't know if it's <laughs> their dream <laughs> but uh you know that's kind of how uh it is my dream anyway and uh but yeah we are a pretty um we're pretty the whole family is pretty uh, much a bunch of uh, self starters uh, my wife as well as an entrepreneur she started a number of businesses uh and 18 and not one i think we've talked about uh, but yeah this is um so i really like that i mean we're very um yeah we're very very tight and i think we also very driven so when we decide to go on a project i mean it's just uh, it goes very quickly and um yeah, we, we we take action very quickly and that's why i see uh, i see a lot of entrepreneurs or uh, people that want to be an entrepreneur and they part of the problem is that they kind of like they keep analyzing and they procrastinate and or they have an idea and they think the, the idea is the business mm -hmm. the idea is is you know obviously is not the business i mean it's the execution that that matters it's taking action and um so that's what i think uh you know that that's what we're very good at we're very good at taking action taking an idea looking at what it looks like what the opportunity looks like in terms of the finances in terms of the challenges in terms of the the resources that we need to make it a success and then once we decide that yeah we're going to go for that uh you know this is what uh, this is what we're going to do mm. um so yeah awesome uh so this is very good like for example like etienne in memphis uh you know we, we had an opportunity for um you know to basically manage construction projects uh, over there for for martel turnkey and for other people and um so etienne is just like decided to okay now we, we're gonna do a construction company in uh in memphis so so he's gonna manage that and and lead that over there Wow, uh, that's awesome! Yeah. And very really good to hear. I always love like stories of that, like that. So, 
in regards mm-hmm. to kind of like your business model for like turnkey investment, what's like the like the ideal type of investor for that type of uh, property? I think for me the the turnkey rent the turnkey rentals is really very good for people who have they don't have time to uh, to basically do it themselves. So this is this is a property that has been renovated that has we found a tenant. And then we, uh, and it's ready to uh, basically, once you sign a contract, you have the property management in place, you have a new tenant, uh, everything has been done on it. So this is perfect for people that have a W-2 job and then they want to achieve financial freedom. So they can build that portfolio of uh, turnkey rentals and then achieve financial freedom. And once they bought back their time and they don't need to work nine to five anymore, then they can do some other projects if they want to do like a burr, uh, a burr strategy, or they want to do flip. Then they, they have the time to do that. They can. Um, so that's what I think is uh, is best. The turnkey rental is just get get you out there to stop trading your time for money, and then uh, and then once you you bought back your time, then you can diversify and do something else. Yeah, that's what definitely is key there because I, I kind of yeah. like I was reading some of your blog posts that it's kind of like. W two middle income people that want to get started in real estate don't have the time, mm-hmm. um, you know, not like accredited where they have to kind of like meet all these qualifications, exactly. and yeah. then you know, eventually they can get to that level. But this is you know you're able to create positive cash flow, you know, into great markets that you guys selected and just kind of like a real turnkey yeah. type of thing. And then you know mentioned you're able to take action pretty quickly rather than like I got to learn Burr strategy and do all this stuff and manage this um, contractors and hire this person, hire exactly. this. It's kind of a great way to get into real estate. So I like that business model. Yeah. It's time consuming and it's a little bit more risk. If you do a burr strategy or flip, it's, it's time consuming. I mean, that's, and that's what people don't have. So uh, most of the time, mm-hmm. so the turnkey kind of gets them that and you can, uh, the single family turnkey, single family rentals, it's an easy, you can kind of ease your way into, into real estate and then so instead of buying you know an apartment building a turnkey apartment building so if you have a lot of money you can do that exactly. i have three i had three for sale if you want but <laughs> uh <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's, if you have the money you can do that but the 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 single family this is really open to anybody that has a regular job and then that uh, you want to get started and mm-hmm. ease their way into real estate yeah and now one thing i also like to yet uh, mention on uh, the, the some of the markets that you're in like memphis and cleveland can you yeah. could tell us like kind of the, the the thinking of why you guys uh, looked into the some of the characteristics of those markets yeah. that make them so attractive? So we looked like uh, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier is uh, kind of landlord friendly. So we want to be able to uh, you know to if the tenant is not paying, then we want to be able to uh, you know to basically find a tenant that is uh, that is going to pay rent because we rely on that, right? Uh, we also want to be able to increase the rent to market and, and that kind of stuff. So landlord friendly is a key ele- key element for us. The um, and then it's sustainable growth. Uh, if you want to have some a house that is affordable, that means that the the economy, the population growth, and all of that is growing at a sustainable rate. So, which is about like one percent, maybe sometimes two percent. If you go in cities like you know that like, uh, that are hot market, like in Arizona or in Texas, these markets are very hot. So that means that there's a lot of people that want to go in. There's a lot of businesses and a lot of interest. So you you pay more for the for the house and. Um, and the rent, they don't catch up at the same rate as the price of the property. So you end up uh, not cash flowing. So that's that's what we found. So the, you want to kind of stay in the kind of BNC last property in these kinds of sustainable market. And then it's really about good driving into the, um, the neighborhood. So you have, obviously you have the whole metropolitan area, but you know every metro, every neighborhood has different dynamics. Uh, and different kind of pricing and different kind of uh, feel. So we're looking for, uh, you know, the, the right neighborhood where we can find the right price, the right kind of uh, tenants, uh, people that are working in general, that uh, they may be blue collar worker or, <clears throat> or low level managers or something like that. And then that's, you know, this is the kind of uh, neighborhood we want to be in. And also um, something that we're looking at is uh, home ownership. So we're looking for at least 60% of the 
of uh, the people that are living in the neighborhood are actually it's actually owner occupied. <clears throat> so that gives a different feel for the for the neighborhood because then you have more pride of ownership and and all of that. And as a tenant goes in there, um, they feel at home. Like they, you know, nobody knows that whether it's rented or not. They just they're the technically the owner of the house for uh, as far as the neighborhood is concerned. So there's a pride of ownership. You can you can stay there for a long time with your kids and going to school and all of that and really build a, a nice family life in, in these uh, safe neighborhoods. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's definitely key there. I like that a lot. Uh, you also, um, we had mentioned at the, the top of the, uh, the show regarding uh, your latest book, Stop mm -hmm. Trading Your Time for Money. Can you talk to us what we can learn from that book and is that available um, uh, right now? Yeah, it's available. It's available on Amazon, <clears throat> and um, and I can I can share with you with you the link, or you can go on my they can go on my website martelleric.com. Uh, com, and um, and my book is really I mean I share my journey through real estate, but really I've done I'm not just telling a story. I've really analyzed and dissected uh, why I was able to get to where I am today and why my mentor was able to get to where he, he is today. And not only that, but other people that I've, that I've met through my life, that you know, hairdresser, uh, mechanic, and how they, they've achieved a similar result. So I've really dissected that and kind of came up with some kind of lessons and, and methods basically to break down the barriers for the normal uh, the average worker, middle class worker, to basically break through these barriers and get to financial freedom and be able to build a legacy for their children. Mm, I like that. We'll make sure to have the link there. Uh, it's definitely, like I said, really very interesting title. Like I said, it's all about time and how you can you know, kind of really make the most of it. So I know you can get a lot of a lot of yeah. information out of there. You kind of that's a true that's a true wealth in my opinion right i mean yeah. we talk about wealth a lot and we kind of think of it as as currency money in the bank but these can you know we're in weird times right now so uh you know we don't know what's going to happen next year so this it's not but having your time and having money uh you know a, a regular income coming in passively i think this is this is key mm -hmm. uh much more than calculating wealth based on you know, kind of a, a money in the bank. Oh yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So can you kind of take us through kind of a typical work day for you? And uh, do you have any special morning routines? Yeah. So typically, I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent of uh, kind of like having a daily practice. And I mentioned that also in my book, uh, but it's really about kind of thinking about what your goals are uh, and, um, and really kind of looking at uh kind of what what are you going to work today what are the constraints that are that are going to kind of like slowing you down preventing you from moving forward breaking barriers to uh to uh, that are standing between you and your goals all these things and it's really uh you know it's, it's a step by step but it's really thinking about kind of okay well, how do i take action what actions do i take today to advance where i want to be and uh i mean this is something that my men my mentor uh taught me also when when he was doing his uh, his real estate investing he would sit down like every every day and really think about that and say okay what are the what questions do i have what what's what's stopping me what do i need to know or learn or something like that or who do i need to reach out to in order to to move forward and he would do that every day and he would work at it during the day and the evening and again the next day he would do the same thing and um, it's better to take a small step, you know, every day, a small action every day than just kind of like don't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so, absolutely. Are there is any like tools or resources that you use, like, you know, with your company or mm -hmm. personally that help you be, become more productive throughout the day? Yeah. So for, uh, for, well, productive is a different story. Uh, so do you mean, like, uh, what do you mean by that? Do you mean, uh, I know some like people tools? use a lot of electronic tools that they use, mm -hmm. like with their team for communication. Some people use oh, okay. like, you know, okay. calendars and things like that of that sort. Okay. So yeah, for, in terms of the team, in terms of the team and running the business, uh, yeah, we do have like a, a CRM, uh, that we're using, uh, and then we're communicating via email and messenger uh, all the time. So we have that on all the time. And it's a great way, especially now that everybody's working at home. So it's a great way to 
kind of communicate and then we just like uh you know and just share stories during the day as well so it doesn't have to be necessarily always about about work but uh sometimes a joke or something 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 funny that somebody saw um but also it helps very quickly coordinate uh any kind of action that needs to be taken um so we have that we have uh yeah we, that's that's our main tool and then we have a dashboard that we're using for um really that that kind of brings stuff from the the crm but also notes from uh, different people and then different sources as well from the accounting system to kind of keep track of all the projects uh, we have like 54 projects that are currently uh, active right now so there's a lot of coordination that need to happen and in that dashboard we keep track of end-to-end kind of where we are um, for each of these projects so Wow, I like that a lot. And yeah. as like so you yeah, like great backstory, you know, wonderful family and everything. I was wondering what can you say that you're most grateful for? Well, for me that was uh that it's easy because it's it's really my family. So um, you know, so I I'm very, very grateful to to be with them every day. And um, so this is great. You spend a lot of time, you know, educating your children and, and all that, but it's it's another thing when your children are actually helping you achieve your goal. I mean, this is a great investment. I mean, your children are actually helping you achieve your goal and achieving financial freedom and building the company. I mean, this is an incredible feeling and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Well, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. And uh, how do we get in contact with you? We'll make sure to have all of your links in the show notes and also a link to the book as well on Amazon. But what's some information you're willing to share with us today? So my personal website is martelleric.com. So in there, you can, you're going to have the links for everything. Um, but also on Instagram, it's E underscore Martel. And on Facebook, it's eric.martel.ca. So these are three best ways to reach out to me. Perfect. Uh, Eric, it was like I said, it was a pleasure to speak with you. I uh, love talking about this topic of family and, and, and investing and business entrepreneurship. We covered it all. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, uh, continued success, uh, all health to you and the family. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah. Thank you, Dwayne. All right. Take care, my friend. Take care.